Hi everyone and thank you for watching today's video. Today I'm going to be sharing how to guide your bow into the different contact points on your instrument and this should enable you to play in all of these different dynamic ranges and go between them smoothly without compromising the tone that you want. And before we begin, I want to talk about the bow that I'll be using in my demonstration. This is the Holstein Two Star Bow from Fiddler Shop. I love their website, they're an awesome company. And this video is sponsored, so I want to be open and honest with you about that, but I'm really happy with this bow. So listen carefully as I play for the tone quality. And if you're looking for a cello bow, if you're in the market for one, this might be a good option for you. Either way, you can look at their website, see what other products they have, and all of that is in the description below. So for those of you who are not familiar with what a contact point is, basically they're is this landscape between the end of your fingerboard and your bridge. You have this whole space to traverse with your bow and where you are in this area will greatly affect your dynamic. And dynamic just means whether you're, uh, whether you're soft or you're loud. Here is soft, you gradually get louder and louder and louder. So in musical terms, we would say piano, you gradually get forte. And you can divide up this landscape into five different contact points. I think of it in terms of one, two, threes in the middle four and five is at the, at the bridge. Whenever you're a beginner, you want to learn how to play with a straight bow. So if you haven't mastered that yet, I would recommend that you do that before you start getting into the more advanced technique of guiding the bow into these different places. So real quick, I'm gonna talk about that. On the D and the A strings, generally speaking, you want the frog to go out away from you this way. A is gonna be more extreme than D because the curvature of the bridge, uh, you know, demands that we, we adjust the angle of our bow in uh, gradients, right? So A extreme, D a little bit less, and then by the time you get to G, you're, you're almost playing behind you where the frog is kind of going that direction. And then on the C, it's even more extreme. It's really going behind you. So that's how you play with the straight bow. Master that and then come back to this video and learn how to actually guide the bow into those different contact points. Let me show you what happens when a beginner tries to get from here to here and they don't know how to guide the bow properly. Oh, the bow skips over the string. It kind of has this crunchy, scratchy sound. And a lot of times in music repertoire, you do have to go quickly from here to here. And you can't just <laughs> It sounds horrible. We don't want to do that. So how I'm um, going to show you today to not do that is by adjusting the angle of the bow. On a down bow, let's say we're in this area and we want to get here fast and this is on a down bow. We're gonna point the tip of the bow towards the floor. That was smooth, it actually sounds good. And if you have your instrument with you, this is just a quick experiment. I want you to do what I just did where the tip is pointed towards the floor. Let the bow do its own thing. You are not pushing, you are not pulling, you're not doing anything. You are just kind of holding the bow and you're gonna let it do its thing. Wow, that sounded good. Now, let's say that you're here at the, the bridge and you're gonna do another down bow. You do not want the tip to be pointing towards the floor because guess what? That's gonna take you off the instrument. What you wanna do this time is point the tip towards the ceiling. And that's how you guide it back up. The inverse is true if you're playing an up bow. So if you're um, on an up bow and you're at the fingerboard and you want to go to the bridge, you're going to be pointing towards the ceiling. Like so. And then if you're on another up bow and you're wanting to get back to the fingerboard, you're going to be pointing towards the floor. Like that. Now the tricky thing is to do this in one fluid motion. So from here, and back. And so you have to practice that. And you can put the metronome on, set it to 60 if you do, and you can do different pulses. I believe that exercise 
I don't want to say originated with Simon Fisher, but I'm pretty sure he was the one that encapsulated it and taught it really, really well. So if you're interested in learning more about this, I would go check out some Simon Fisher resources. And he's a violinist, but this concept applies to all stringed instruments. And he has a lot of information on the subject, not obviously just directing the bow, but a, a ton of really great bow work and uh, just instrument practice tips in general. So. Shout out to Simon Fisher. And what I do, I'm not sure if it exactly matches what he teaches, I can't really remember, but what I do is I, I leave the metronome off and I just kind of keep a general internal pulse. It's not specific, but it's, you know, it works. And I do two pulses in a bow first. So one, two, one, two. And then I do four in a bow. One, do six where I think in triplets so one two three four five six then I'll do eight after eight I'll do 12 where I think in triplets again and then I'll do 16 thinking in four groups of four and then um no no my brain 24 thinking in triplets again and then 32 again thinking in groups of four so three and four alternating 32 is really really hard by the way and as you increase the number that you put inside of the bow, the uh, the movement gets smaller and smaller. So by the time you're doing 32 of these in a single bow stroke, it's like mm, tiny, tiny little movements, barely anything. You can hardly even see it move. But those tiny movements, if you really work on them and uh, you bring them into your repertoire playing, they make a huge difference in your musicality. Hopefully, if you were feeling frustrated before, like you couldn't really express yourself with the bow very well. Hopefully this video brings you one step closer to being able to do that. I guess that's really all I need to say on the topic that was shorter than I thought, but once you get the concept, it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. But of course, if you have any questions, put those in the comment section below and stay tuned for my next video.